Delana Colon Morero, and from about 2016 until very recently of the end of September this year, um, I served in various digital archivist roles at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, and most recently I was the senior digital archivist at the museum. So today I'll be speaking to you about our software preservation work at the museum, specifically during my time there, and um, most importantly, the work that I did to create internal standards and for metadata and how we developed workflows for processing. Um, we do have some other software preservation work by our software curator, Al Caso. However, um, I do not necessarily understand the work that he does, so I can't really speak to it. Um, so I will be kind of focusing on kind of my work at the museum. And so a brief background about our software collection. The museum has essentially collected software since the museum's founding in the late 70s and early 80s. And in 2017, the Software History Center was officially launched. And that allowed for more focused collecting of software materials, whereas before we were collecting software by virtue of collecting people's machines and computers, because once you donate your computer, you don't really need the software that goes with it. So they would uh, give that material to us as well. And so the museum's collection has everything from paper tape and punched cards to CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, and software source code with the very heavy emphasis on PC software. And by my last count, it totaled over 2,500 linear feet of just uh, physical software material. But straight off the bat, I am going to say that our biggest limitation for software preservation work is really our limited resources um, monetarily, our limited resources due to people and due to time. When I started in 2016, there was very little intellectual control over the software collection. And having like so little intellectual control made it very difficult to do any work such as disk imaging or emulation. So this meant that our biggest priority was just kind of sorting all of that out. And there were attempts by other archivists in the past to inventory and catalog our software objects, but those efforts were not done either consistently or completely due to a variety of reasons, um, not the fault of the archivist at all. But as you can imagine, um, kind of gaining control of over 2,500 plus linear feet is a massive effort um, and a lot of time and a lot of people need to be used to fully describe those materials so that they can be used. So for the first two to three years uh, at my time at the museum, I worked on two very important items in tandem. The first was an inventory of our software collection that had kind of box barcode location. There were tons of boxes that didn't have any barcoded locations that were a little bit harder to track down. So I did not focus on those initially. And then also I needed to establish cataloging instructions for describing our software items. And so the purpose of the inventory um, itself was to kind of collect and count and provide a brief description of the cataloged or partially cataloged software items. And while I was spending my day and parts of my day counting floppies and CDs, I was also writing up instructions for cataloging software. And this slide isn't necessarily correct, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, and I will fix that so when you review this later, you can see the right slide. Um, but I'm going to admit that while trying to create cataloging instructions for software, like my background is not in software at all or software preservation at all. So this was a totally new field um, of experience for me. And so I had no idea how to approach it. And I had no resources at the time or any connections to like this wonderful community uh, to ask for help. And so I conducted an informal survey of staff and curators to ask them what they needed to one, be able to find a piece of software and to potentially run it. And I got a lot of good feedback from them and used it to implement policies for software cataloging. And I also wanna point out that um, the museum's way of cataloging does not align to any metadata standard out there. We use MIMSI as our collections management system and whatever way we catalog software, it had to be molded around 
that specific system, the fields that were currently in use for other formats, such as AV, text documents, and physical objects. And because of that, if you go to look at the museum's catalog, you won't see anything that really aligns to premise or mark or any system or standard um, that's currently out there in the world. And we also haven't contributed to anything like Wikidata because honestly, the learning curve on that seemed really steep and wasn't the best use of our staff time. So what I aimed to do instead was to create documentation that was straightforward to the point and something volunteers or other staff members could pick up with relative ease. Standards and systems don't really provide that, especially if you don't have the background in them. And I recognize that most of the labor when it comes to cataloging is really done by our museum volunteers. And those volunteers can be tech retirees, their interns, their temporary project staff. They kind of run the gamut of experience. And so they may not be trained to any type of US archival standards specifically. And even with that, I found that cataloging software is not intuitive and it can be quite difficult for people to grasp or wrap their heads around. And once those inventories and cataloging procedures were established, I focused my work on learning how to disk image software. So we built digital forensics workstations with the help of our IT department so that we could image software materials, but also so that we can process other types of born digital materials that we may receive. I created sample workflows, naming conventions for files, folder structures to establish a process that started at um, kind of acquisition and cataloging all the way to the final ingestion of disk images into our digital repository. And so as the museum had not actually focused on software preservation work as it related to archival work and description, I also had the opportunity to create an internal case study to help us determine how much work and how much effort software preservation would be and how we would like to approach that moving forward. So we used the inventory that I created to select a collection that fit the following criteria. First, the software in the collection had to be copyrighted between the 1980s and early 2000s. It needed to have a range of media formats, uh, specifically five and a quarter inch floppy disks to CDs and DVDs, because those would be the things that I could image with my own workstations. And then we knew that working with any Macintosh software would be tricky and we need a dedicated Mac workstation for that. So we shifted our focus to kind of non-Apple software and we wanted software that we could consider as being packaged, meaning that it would come off of the shelf in a box. And lastly, to make things easier, we wanted a collection that was already cataloged at the item level. And this would allow me to speed up the process by only making changes to the catalog record instead of creating a whole new record and barcoding an item. Um, and for us, that was the Jim Warren collection, which you can find the finding aid for online. And we found that this case study, um, at the end of the day, it took us about two to three hours per item uh, to catalog an image. And of course, that kind of takes into account something that has like 10 floppy disks in it or like one CD-ROM. And we also attempted to emulate some of our software, but found that with limited staff time, um, it just didn't work. It wasn't feasible for us to do or expand on. Um, and we realized that that time was better spent on cataloging, reference work, um, and managing our digital repository and more. However, with COVID um, and working from home, a lot of the museum software preservation efforts have essentially been placed on hold Without access to the buildings or materials, it was very difficult to catalog or image software items. And then also during this time that complicated things, um, I moved away from the area, completely out of state to the other side of the country. And so that pretty much brought all software preservation work that I was doing um, to a stop. And then on top of that, uh, increasing staff time was spent towards building a new digital asset management system for us, as well as a new collections management system. Um, and to build a new collections management system and to migrate also meant that we had to clean up all of our existing records, uh, which meant we weren't really focusing on cataloging anything new. We were trying to clean up what we already had. 
And since I left the museum at the end of September, I kind of doubt in the last maybe few days they have done a lot more. Um, work is still pretty much completely stopped in the software realm um, until either new staff members are hired and or the CMS and the dam building efforts are completely finished. So to summarize, a lot of our kind of software preservation efforts have simply been spent on catalog cataloging and gaining intellectual control over what we have. We established workstations and workflows for disk imaging, but have only applied that to a small, incredibly small fraction of our collection. And for us, emulation is a dream, um, but it is not a priority at this time. But my hope and my parting wishes, especially for the museum, is that they'll be able to dedicate more resources and more time into preserving this really wonderful software collection that they do have. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, my contact information is above, so I'm always welcome to answer any questions and connect you with anyone at the museum as well. So thank you again. <laughs>